All right, we break into you right now about some information about Framber Valdez, one of the key starters for the Houston Astros organization, reported some elbow soreness, according to sources at the press conference. Leah Van um, with the Cron and several others in the media reporting this. We'll talk about what this, what implications this could have. Um, we don't know yet if it's long term. It doesn't sound long term. We'll talk about it on this special edition of Locked On Astros. Jainel Diaz, this is Locked On Astros. Welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on X at Eric Talk Astros. You can find the show at Locked On Astros your team every day. And thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Go and check out the Locked On Astros podcast. And Brett, when you're not crying into your um, hat uh, about Farmer Valdez, where can they find you at? Well, they can find me at um, H-Town Wheelhouse on X, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at um, Stroh's 411 on um, on Facebook, and they can find me at Back to the Bullpen on Instagram and Facebook as well. You know, I'm always positive, always Stroh's. I'm positive that I don't like this news. Um, I'm positive that I'm not going to be the sky is falling right now because this may not be a long-term thing, but good Lord, Eric, another injury. And we will share with y'all some of what JV said to us at the press conference yesterday, because Ari Alexander from KPRC channel two asked an excellent question about the rash of injuries going on in major league baseball. It's about a four minute clip, but we're going to play it for you in its entirety because it's really, really good information. I even have captions up there for you. So I think you guys and girls will enjoy that. All right. So uh, let's just kind of uh, recap what happened as I was co- going home from school today around two 30, uh, we got a report, uh, I think it was Ari Alexander, that basically said that Blair Henley was going to start for Farmer Valdez today. And I, I think everybody was had the same reaction I did. Who the heck is Blair Henley? And so this was like, okay, what happened? And I know a lot of people were joking about, well, maybe it's the eclipse. Uh, Farmer Valdez got uh, upset about the eclipse, or maybe he stared too long into the the sun or something like that. There's a whole bunch of different conspiracy theories out there, but um, there was the Astros were very quiet about this. And the fact that they were quiet about this meant that uh, there was something, this was something serious. Typically if there's a minor injury or something that they would typically come out and say it, but uh, they waited, they um, Channel Rome, once the locker room opened and uh, the press was available to meet with media uh, with the uh, coaches, uh, they said that um, Joe Espada would meet with uh, the media to talk about Farmer Valdez, give an update around 4.45 today, and Dana Brown would be available as well. And to make it worse, to kind of add to the uh, suspense, Jim Crane is up in uh, Arlington as well. So it, a lot of people were like, okay, what's going on with La Grassa out there? And so, but... I think what uh, Joe Espada said that Framer Valdez felt soreness in the top of his left elbow after playing catch yesterday and that the pain or the uh, soreness continued into today and that he flew back into Houston to uh, get it looked at. But both him and Joe Espada, uh, both Dan Brown and uh, Joe Espada both said the fact that we didn't put uh, him on IL means that uh, we don't think it's a very serious issue. Yeah, and but it just it just goes to highlight that this is just another pitcher. Now, he's not going down or he's not getting TJ or anything, but we just saw Bieber was off to one of his best starts of his career. Boom, he's gone. Spencer Strider, boom, he's gone. Um, you know, I just recounted on X about Tyler Glasnow talking about, you know, a few years ago, whenever they did this sticky substance ban. I mean, 
there are a lot of things I think to point to. I mean, Frommer just got through six days ago throwing seven and two thirds scoreless innings. And so he looked good last time he was out. The last thing you want is for Fromber to be dialed in and for Fromber to go on the IL or something major happen. But I don't think we put the cart before the horse. Um, I know it's easy to because you, you, you look at the evidence and you read the room of Major League Baseball and there clearly has got to be some sort of discussion that goes on between players and Major League Baseball. And I think maybe there needs to be some sort of extreme shift where the players, if they feel like their pitchers, the assets of this of, of this league and their pitchers are at danger of being injured because of multiple things. And JV actually touches on that in the, in the clip we'll show here in a little bit, Eric. I mean, this is something that's so serious that I, I mean, I could think that why wouldn't the players just say, you know what, we're going to go on strike. Like we're tired of getting injured. I'm not saying they're going to do that, but this to me is something that is that serious. Right. Because you have a pitcher, a starter out on, I would say about half of the teams right now in major league baseball. And that's not a good thing. Yeah. And I know that, um, I think the Trevor Bauer and definitely also, uh, Tyler, uh, Glass now also mentioned that uh, the sticky stuff is not just to get a better spin rate or anything. It's just it's uh, to give them better control. And uh, so they're not having just throwing all, all over the place. And like Glass now said that he tried to go cold turkey one game and the next day he woke up the most sore he's ever been after a start just because he had to do stuff to get the ball to do what he wanted to do without that. So, uh, yes, you have the MLB uh, wanting to enforce the pitch clock, the all this non-sticky stuff, and having all this, and then you have all these pitchers going down. Then you have MLB coming out and saying, no, uh, the empirical evidence is saying that this is not causing this. Uh, you, you will see this uh, as uh, time goes by. But I – it's clearly you're you're asking these pitchers to do something they haven't done before, which is rush rush the, their delivery and do it un I mean very awkwardly. Yeah, rush it. They they get no time in between pitches to decompress um, mentally. They may be rushing it. But going back to talking about glass now, and I I see here that's right. Loisaga from the Yankees is getting Tommy John. Um, Garrett Cole is on the IL. He may eventually need Tommy John. I mean, this is the reigning war. This is the reigning Cy Young winner. I, I mean, Garrett Cole is one of the best pitchers of our time. I mean, he was here for a short time, and we know he used spider tack. And Tyler Glass now even said, "Look, I'm not for using spider tack, but I use rosin and sunscreen because it allowed me to get the grip." And like you talked about, Eric, with him feeling sore, and he talked about that because the baseball, instead of like, because I don't have a baseball you like hold the ball at, at a certain place in your hand, but when you don't have the sticky stuff, you have to, you have to force the ball towards the back of your palm. And when you're doing that, when you have to grip the ball tighter, when you're throwing that you're using muscles and you're straining parts of your elbow that you wouldn't normally strain so that you can get a grip because when you throw it, you don't want that ball purposely going into somebody's chin, you know? And so there is a, there is a major, major issue here in Major League Baseball, and I think in this next segment, we just need to hear what uh, Justin Verlander had to say about it because um, Ari Alexander just had a great a great question. I figured, why not feature it on on this show in particular? Unfortunately, with this news about Fromber. Yeah, we'll go and continue the Farmer Valdez conversation in a second. We don't know exactly what the doctor said, but we'll go ahead and um, talk about what we know. And then we'll go and talk about who the heck is Blair Henley and what to expect tonight against the Texas Rangers. Yeah, this episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Amazon Fire TV has a million and one things to, to offer you. I mean, just go to Amazon.com forward slash locked on fire TV. Check it out today. I mean, it's your destination for sports, live games, highlights, in-depth analysis. You can even get locked on Astros, your team every day, Eric and Brett on your TV. I mean, I think that's cool. Just go to the Amazon fire TV channels, 
search baseball, look for the Astros icon. The first two videos pop up, boom, you'll see us there. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver all sports brands and all for free. Pro leagues, college conferences, it doesn't matter. It delivers all the analysis and highlights you want. March Madness may be coming to an end, but the NBA playoffs are here and MLB is in full swing. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos, and more. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this one. To learn more, go to Amazon.com forward slash Locked On Fire TV. All right, for those of y'all that are just joining the show, uh, the, the Astros have um, scratched from Valdez from tonight's start. Uh, you have uh, Blair Henley, who is going to be making the start today. Uh, this is uh, we don't. This is not somebody I know of. This is some guy that's in the rotation right now. He has a five something ERA uh, so far this season, and it just so happened because of the last minute need for this. Uh, we have um, Valdez that was scratched. Um, uh, I guess it happened earlier this morning. I, uh, for those of y'all that are just joining the show, uh, he threw a bullpen or just played catch yesterday, and he noticed some um, elbow soreness, and uh, it, the problem persisted today. So what happened from there was uh, he went ahead and they went ahead and um, – shipped him to not shipped him, but they sent him to Houston where he's going to get the doctor to look at uh, both Dana Brown and Joe Spada both said that we don't think it's a big deal. This is more precautionary. We just want to make sure everything's okay. Uh, so the fact that we haven't put him on the IL, that means that everything should be okay. So that's something that um, they're trying to reassure sure us about. Hey, I'm not Brett Chancy. Uh, you're Brett Chancy. So, oh, well, well, hey, no, sorry, man. Um, I got a call from my son. Um, do we want to do we want to play these words from JV, Eric? Because I, I, I think it makes sense what he said here in this press conference. What do you want to do that? Um, yeah, can I, I was just about to tell him about who Blair Henley was. Oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so Blair Henley last year with the Space Cowboys, so it, um, he did pitch in one game, uh, with the Space Cowboys, and uh, he. It, it's he had a 5.40 ERA. He, I, I know it's a small sample size, but he had a 7.2 walks in nine innings. I know he didn't really have that many walks, but that's how much he would average over the full season in Corpus Christi, which was 25 games. He had 4.5 walks per nine innings, and he averaged 8.9 strikeouts per nine innings. His um, whip overall was 1.472. Uh, so overall, he allowed eight home runs. Uh, he uh, pitched 106 innings pitched. So uh, sorry, that's what he's done this season so far uh, with Space Cowboys. Um, sorry, in one game, he has a 540 ERA. Uh, so basically, he's just a guy that happened to be uh, it's his turn in the rotation. So it was his turn to come up and pitch. And so I think that's basically why he's up here there's yeah. probably other some better options up there um force whitley's nowhere close to starting there's some other names out there that uh we could have brought up but blair hanley he's gonna face this this um rangers lineup that has crushed well, the astros yeah well you know he was uh he was a top 30 prospect for two years until he had the tommy john um right. so prior to that so so what i have up here someone's asking about sean dubin Shaw Newman just pitched one inning this last game during um, in this outing after after JV. You also had um, Forrest Whitley and F Forrest Whitley topped out at um, 98. And so I, th I think he threw 17 pitches. They said he felt good. I haven't heard, heard anything negative. And so Dubin, if he can get back to being healthy, Dubin could be a guy who could make a spot a spot start for you. Um, we've got horses in the pen we've got we've got horses in the barn but yeah i mean this definitely puts us behind the eight ball even more and you know what i think this causes the offense to probably have a lot more urgency now i mean yeah. they've got to score more than three runs tonight against the rangers yeah the astros draft 
Jed Henley out at uh, the Texas, the University of Texas in the right. seventh round in a 2019 draft. So uh, this is a guy that was a he is not a nobody, but he's just somebody that his uh, his development slowed down a little bit. So this is his chance to shine this year. Last year with the hooks, his ERA was 506. And uh, he missed 2022 because of Tommy John, everything. Uh, and then in 2021, he had a 702 ERA. Then go back to 2019, between all the teams, he had a uh, 147 ERA. So he hasn't pitched much professionally. So this is um, his chance uh, to to make his um, to kind of put his uh, just to get it in the mind of Joe Espada. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's um, let's see what JB had to say about about all these just various things going on and the stuff. This this trend in baseball that we see. as hard as they possibly can and um, spend the ball as hard as they possibly can and um, you know it's hard to deny those results obviously uh, how can you it's, 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 it's a double-edged sword how can you tell somebody to go out there and not do that when they're capable of throwing 100 and, and you know so this, this young guy comes up and throws a pitch 95 and gives up a big homer and everybody's like what the hell man um, so something needs to change uh, I, I, I don't have all the answers I, I know pitching um, you know I, and I I've been, I don't want to beat a dead horse here. It is what it is. Um, I think the data is out there at this point. But when the balls started to change back in 2016, they started flying out a bit more frequently. Um, I know myself personally that started changing how I had to approach pitching. Um, you have to start swinging. You have to start approaching uh, uh, the batter as I want to swing and miss. I can't have him put the ball in play where the old adage, uh, pitch down, pitch away from the guy, hit your spot, get a weak, you know, get weak contact early in the count um, and then you can kind of go up and uh, that kind of went out the window um, when when everybody started being able to leave the yard especially opposite field um, you know and, and look I, I like I said I, I, I'm not here to uh, I, I, I've said my piece on that before in the past and it is what it is as long as we're all out here competing on an even playing field that's what I care about and we all have the same baseball in our hands so that's that um, but I do think that you throw that in the mix um, and you throw analytics in the mix, and you throw the pitch clock in the mix, and it all kind of, you know, all kind of adds up. And uh, it's unfortunate. I don't know how we rewind the clock. Um, maybe there's some sort of way to incentivize starting pitching, going deeper in games. Um, you know, I remember I talked to Scherzer at length last year with the Mets, and we talked about having, uh, you know, the starting pitcher be tied to a DH, and having, um, you know, you have to uh, achieve certain uh, milestones before. If the pitcher comes out and he hasn't achieved any of those milestones, um, you lose your DH. So at least the team is incentivized to teach their pitchers to go through the lineup three times. Whereas right now, nobody's incentivized to do that. No teams are incentivized to um, tell their pitcher, okay, let's, let's go through the lineup three times. Let's navigate a lineup. Um, those aren't conversations that are had anymore. Nobody's fault. Um, it's just the, the nature of the game where it's at right now. But if that mind shift switches and teams start um, – incentivizing okay how do we get guys out three times because right now third time through the lineup they're looking for an excuse to take you out because analytically it says that batters have more success third time through um you know um, so i can't i can't sit here and blame anybody but the second that you start incentivizing pitchers staying in the game longer throwing 110 pitches throwing 100 pitches you know working navigating the lineup then the the, the trickle down permeates all the way to little league baseball you know everybody's trying to get to this level so you know, you, you want to go play D1, now you got to throw hard and you got to spin the ball well. You want to go to the minor leagues, you got to throw hard and spin the ball well. And, you know, it all it all starts from here down. Um, the second that you start incentivizing pitching and guys are getting drafted because they can pitch and get guys out, then that goes down a level and then down a level and down a level. And, you know, I, I just hope that we don't wait too long. Because, sure. uh, you know, it can, it can uh, you know, it's obviously a pandemic and it's going to continue. All right, so I know that uh, a lot of people are complaining about the audio issue there. That is um, something that we can't really control there. 
Uh, but uh, you can kind of read by the captions and you can always turn your volume up. But yeah. what Verlander was saying there is basically the fact that uh, uh, there is an issue with uh, what's going on here. But, I mean, he's okay with the rules as long as everybody has to deal with it. But there is a problem. And um, it's something that does need to be addressed. And you, you're having all these people come up throwing 97 miles per hour. You want the spin rate. You want everything that um, that makes them put un, undue pressure on their body. And that's what's leading to these injuries. And so uh, that's basically what uh, Justin Verlander was saying in this. And uh, from her Valdez, we don't know exact details. Uh, we don't know if there's any um, how serious this is. We just know that right now, as of, what, 5.30 on Monday, we know that uh, Farmer Valdez was flown back to Houston to be evaluated for a sore elbow. We do know that the um, airbag feels like it's not a big issue. It's not something that, I mean, the, I guess the Spada and Dana Brown, if it was a big issue, if they felt like it was something they needed to do something, they would have put him on IL. But they feel like they're just... They're just being on the safe side and they're just getting him checked up. So that's what they're hoping. That's what they're praying for. But what if, what if it's a little bit more? And so I think that's what Astros fans are asking. And uh, I know that Spencer Arigetti, he was not, um, he was on, he would have been on short rest for today, but he's another option. Uh, let's say that Henley does not do good today, but he's another option that you could do. Um, uh, so uh, we'll see uh, what happens. But um, Farmer Valdez, he he's when he's good, he's good, and the Astros will miss him. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, and we don't know how long this is going to be. I mean, it could be short term, it could be long term. We're not sure. Right. But um, at the end of the day, um, you're just going to have to, you know, it's going to be have to have to be the next man up mentality. And heck. Um, that gives us some good news to talk about towards the end uh, here. Eric is um, talking about Ronel Blanco. Oh, yeah. Major League Baseball Player of the Week. It's not all bad here. We're always positive, always strows. Um, and so it's just one of those things where um, this guy has come in with really no expectations. Uh, people, you know, I thought he's always had starter stuff. I've always liked his stuff. I thought he would eventually turn into – not necessarily what he's turned into, uh, but it seems like he he really he really hates giving up hits. He 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 likes <laughs> being on the mound, and he hates when people hit the ball. And so um, we love that that he hates giving up hits. And I I really thought we, we talked about it last night. I really thought that he was going to do another have another no hitter two games in a row. And so um, yeah, so it, it's just you know. To have a guy like this, to have his story the way it is, for him to be the age that he is and pitching the way he is in his first nine major league starts total is just it's just phenomenal. And you you hope that he's a constant, but you also hope that the bats pick up the pace a little bit too, because there could be a little bit more run sport than three runs for someone, especially like Ronel Blanco. Yeah, Ronel Blanco, uh, he had held opponents to 0 0.22 batting average and a zero ERA this uh, season so far. Uh, so it's it's just awesome to see what he's been doing. And uh, you have to think that the league will adjust to him. They will figure him out a little bit. But until then, let's just watch what this kid can do. And this is a good story. It's a feel-good story. Somebody that's not wasn't thought as a top prospect or anything like that. So what the Astros need to do in today's game, uh, they've got to, um, I think it's Andrew Heaney, the Astros are facing, and they're going to be, Hen Henley uh, is going to be on the mound for the Astros. So this is definitely uh, a one of those rare ma matchups where you're going to have a one letter missing from the names to be uh, the different names. So um, the Astros need to take care of business. I don't care who's on the mound. They need the offense needs to come out and they need to take care of business and they need to uh, tie the series and they need to be four and seven because I looked at the standings after last night's uh, podcast and we were still tied with the A's for the worst record. Am I panicked? No. If Farmer Valdez is hurt long term, would I be a little bit more panicked? Yes and no, but I know that um, we. I just saw a note that uh, Justin Verlander will throw a bullpen, I believe, tomorrow. 
and then he'll make another start this uh, weekend with the Space Cowboys. So he's coming back. Uh, yeah, he's coming back. Yeah, um, he sh- he should be back. I think by the Brave series is what they're saying, and um, he's apparently supposed to. He's, I believe, he's going on the road with the Isot um, when they when they play the Isotopes. Um, kind of, I say out west. It's more southwest than than west. He's not going to the west coast, but um, yeah, you know, hope to see him back once the team gets back into town. And because when we come back from Kansas City, uh, we've got the Rangers and the Braves, <laughs> so that life does not get any easier. Um, that that Braves team is something else. Ronald Acuna Jr. has become one of the most electric players in the league, and you just hope that he doesn't have a field day. You know, the guy loves to steal bases. He loves to hit home runs. And what can you do in Minute Maid? You can hit a lot of home runs. So um, we'll just we'll just keep cheering on our guys that are on the field. You know, Dubon's in the lineup tonight. Um, um, we have Carantini behind the plate. We have Altuve DH in the leadoff spot. And Abreu got moved down a bit. Pena's above Abreu tonight. Um, the top four haven't changed. Um, but, you know, I anticipate this. Dubon um, is playing second base. So we'll see, you know, um, some good defensive plays the night before. Let's hope they get some more of that tonight, turn some double plays, get some key outs, but score when guys are on base. And I think that that this Astros team can walk out of Arlington with the split tonight. Yes, uh, that's definitely what they need to do. So, guys, all we could do is um, if you have some of those prayer candles uh, with Framer Valdez on them, go ahead and light it tonight and go ahead. And, um, you know, some people have those prayer candles, um, so – uh, with all the players on there. So, but I think hopefully it's just something that's a minor issue, but until we hear anything major or they put them on IL, um, let's not worry too much about it. Let's hope that it's just maybe some rest, uh, rest the elbow, put some ice on it or something, uh, and maybe eat some chicken noodle soup or something to get him better. So, um, that's all I got for this locked on uh, special locked on Astros podcast Any closing thoughts, Brett. No, just, uh, you know, just make sure you hang out with the Astros. You hang out with us, subscribe to our YouTube channel and just realize that we're your team every single day. We got you covered. Um, Eric and I are here through thick and thin, and we think there are greener pastures ahead. So hang tight, keep the faith and uh, go Strohs. All right, we'll see you tomorrow or later today, I guess. (laughs) 